What are the remnants of Israel? That's what we're going to talk about today in Romans 11. So Paul went through on our last chapter talking about how the people of Israel were given this pathway, given the covenants and the law and all this information, and instead ended up becoming hard-hearted, not seeing Jesus in as this fulfillment of the Jewish laws, the Jewish gospel, the Jewish path towards forgiveness, becoming disobedient and committed to being against Jesus in general, sending him to Pilate to put him to death. They didn't understand what was supposed to happen. And instead, these Gentiles came in and started understanding it. And so you'll notice that Paul, when we were talking about Acts, he would would speak to the temple. And then when eventually he would get thrown out of the temple, he would go speak to the Gentiles. So first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. That was Jesus' path. That was Paul's path too. And they've been accepting the message. They've been understanding it. But Paul's heartbroken about this because he said, I would give it all up, my, my own faith and love in Christ, if I could just get my people to believe it too. So then he said, has God rejected his people? Is this over with? And Paul is saying, no, he's an Israelite. He's a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. He, God never rejected his people. He foreknew. He knew ahead of time. He knew since the beginning of time. But he knows that the scripture was supposed to be fulfilled. All these prophecies, Elijah, Hosea, Isaiah, Zechariah, all those things were giving these prophecies that were coming to the point of Jesus. God did not abandon his people. He sent prophets. He sent people to tell them. And the very last one of them is being John the Baptist. And God knew that there were, at the time of Elijah, 7,000 people who didn't bow the knee to Baal, to, to worship a handmade fake God. And so he knows even now there are those people, these remnants chosen by grace, not based on works, but based on faith. Because he said that if the f- grace is based on works, then it's no longer grace. So let's say I buy you a gift. I buy you a birthday gift. And I say, well, this isn't thanks for you helping me clean my house last week. Well, now it's not a gift anymore. Now you're just paying me because I helped you out last week. The gift of grace is not based on works because he says it would no longer be grace. And so he said then when Israel failed to get it said what it was seeking, the elect were hardened. And we talked about that in the past, that when God hardened Pharaoh's heart, it was what I think Father Mike Schmitz was talking about, is that the sun can melt you if you're wax, but if you're soil, Play soil, it can harden you. If you get hardened by God, it's you doing the hardening. You're you're deciding not to be wax and instead to be soil, and you're deciding that you're going to become hardened. And his people did become hardened. And it even goes back to quoting Isaiah saying, They gave him a spirit of stupor, so their eyes would not see and their ears would not hear to this very day. Israel's in trouble. The nation of Israel is in trouble, but God isn't forsaking them. God has not abandoned them. And Paul himself is saying, look, I'm a descendant of Abraham, descendant of Benjamin. Yes, I'm a descendant of Abraham because I am half Jewish. I don't know what tribe I would be, but you you get the idea that this is not about lineage anymore. It was never about lineage because God even talked about saving other people. Saving the Gentiles was always part of the plan. But there are people who have remained faithful. Even in the time of Elijah, when it looked really pessimistic, in fact, it was so bad, Elijah thought he was the only one. I think at some point he says, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left who still believes in you, God. And God's like, no, no, no. There's, there's still 7,000 people who haven't bowed the knee to Baal. We're saying that here too. The, there are people in Israel who do believe in Jesus. And like we've mentioned before, some of the very first, obviously the apostles, but many others, believers in Jesus were Jewish because they saw the fulfillment of the Messiah coming in. I think it's always an interesting thing because you get people who are desperate for the Messiah, people who wanted to be saved by God. 
that's why I called it the temple structure in a sense, that there's always kind of a very elite upper crust. I'm more educated than you are. I read this, I study this. And of course, you know, we have pastors who study the word of God and, and immerse themselves in it. In this particular case, these were people who were trying to keep their own power. They were trying to keep this deal with the Romans going. They had no interest in the Messiah actually coming because it was just going to screw up what kind of peace they had with the Greeks and then the Romans. And so they weren't really interested in it, but the people were desperate for it. The very common day, every man, woman, child in the middle of the world, they didn't have a sweet deal with the Romans. They wanted the Messiah to come. And he came and they recognized him, not everyone, but many people recognized him in this. So there are going to be those people saved by grace, Jew and Gentile, because God is about faith and not about works. And that's what Jesus tried to say. You could see him saying it in the fact that you don't care, that you're trying very hard to get the cups clean, but not your hearts, that you're trying to keep the Sabbath, but you're not trying to keep the spirit of the Sabbath. You're trying to avoid people from being healed on Sabbath because you don't care about the people. He, tr he did say all of these things, and people just weren't really getting it. So God didn't intend for them to stumble and fall. Instead, through their trespass, he says, salvation has come through the Gentiles because they stumbled, because they didn't immediately take to the message. Again, first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. The Gentiles got to hear the word of God, which was the plan all along. And so because of their stubbornness, we didn't want Israel to fall. We didn't want the Jewish people to reject Jesus. But because they did, this message went out to other people. And we saw that even and again in the life of Jesus, where he went and talked to the Canaanite woman. He talked to the woman at the well who was a Samaritan. We saw him reaching out. And the interesting part of it is Jesus was more open about who he was the farther he was away from Jerusalem because of that stubbornness, that stumbling. They could handle hearing that he was the Messiah. He was able to be more open with them because they were not just going to reject him. And so the Gentiles, in many cases, didn't reject him. And he says, look, even though I'm you know, from Abraham, I am now speaking to you Gentiles. I'm an apostle to the Gentiles. I do my ministry to the Gentiles, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles, but it's not a rejection. The Jewish people are not rejected. There's no um, replacement. I guess there's some sort of something called uh, like a replacement theology where now the Jewish nation is replaced with the Christian nation and now we're the chosen people. Nope, everyone's the chosen people. God chooses us all, Jew, Gentile, everybody. We are all chosen. And it's now a matter of faith. Their rejection means the message gets out to more people, more areas, and it's offered as first fruit to the holy, but everyone is going to get this. I think this whole, it says it says the whole lump of the root is holy and so are the branches. My first thought of this was when Jesus was talking to the Phoenician woman and saying, you know, the family eats the meal, but the dog gets the table scraps. He wasn't saying she's a dog again and not calling her the family dog, but it's all holy. The first fruits that were broken off for the chosen people, but the whole rest of the lump is the same holy root and branches that is offered to everybody. It is all holy. So don't look at it as part of it being good and part of it being leftovers. It's all good. And so it says that we, as Gentiles, were grafted on. We, you know, grafting is when you uh, take part like an apple tree. You have an apple tree and you have this other variety of apple tree. You can take a branch from the other apple tree and attach it to the main tree and it will produce fruit on that tree, just like the tree produced the other fruit. The tree is still producing good fruit. It's just grafted on. It is attached onto the tree. And there shouldn't be arrogance towards the branches. You shouldn't think poorly of the roots that support you. So we should not think poorly of the Jewish people that were the roots of our faith. Nor should the roots of the faith think badly of us who are branches. The main tree, we're grafted onto it. We have been made part of this tree. So there's no this versus that, them versus us. 
It is all now us, children of God, whether we're grafted or whether we're part of the the tree that was there originally, we are all part of it. If we reject this kindness and we reject this grafting, we could be cut off from the tree too. So we don't want to continue in their unbelief. We want to be grafted in. We want to be a part of this. So I guess that's the whole point is not to think of them versus us, the Jews versus the Gentiles. We are all in this together as one big family. We are all part of the same tree and the same tree produces fruit, grows together. And that's where we are right now. See, very complicated gardening going on now. And he said that we should understand that this hardening that's coming upon Israel until it says the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. We do not know what that is. Nobody knows what that is. Someone made the joke, 500 millionth believer comes in through the tree of the Gentiles and suddenly the fullness is over. We don't know. We don't know what that means, but it's going to be something. And when that happens, then Israel will be saved as a whole. The deliverer, it says, will come from Zion. And so then it quotes essentially Isaiah 59 that says the deliverer will come from Zion, banish the ungodliness, And this will be their covenant and take away their sins. This is obviously Jesus, but we don't know what the fulfillment of the Gentiles means. So hopefully we'll figure it out at some point. I think that that in a sense, that's what the problem in people trying to interpret the Bible, you know, like you had the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin and the Sadducees kind of gave up on the Bible. Oh, we just believe in the first five books. We don't even believe in the prophecies and the prophets and all these things that are to come. The Pharisees were trying, but they were misinterpreting things. And so I think that that's a really interesting point is I try not to get wrapped up in end time things, get wrapped up in, well, does this mean it's coming to an end? It was funny because we were talking about all the auroras and now we have this comet and Mount Rainier is going to blow up in a volcano. I don't know if it is or not, but you know what I mean? Like, is this a sign of the tribulations, the, the birth pangs? And I think it's dangerous to do this or to sit there and try to look at and say, what is the fulfillment of the Gentiles to come? It's dangerous because as soon as we get this idea on our head, what we think it is, then suddenly when it happens or it starts to happen, we reject it because we're like, no, 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 Jesus isn't the Messiah. This is what the Messiah is supposed to be like. No, be open to the fact that we don't really understand what it is. People had this idea of the Messiah being the rescuer the, the person who was going to slaughter the Romans and kick them out of our land so that we can be a people of Israel again. It was a misinterpretation. It was a, a, a looking at a part of what the Messiah was supposed to be instead of looking at the suffering servant, the person who came to die for your sins, not to die for your country. Again, if we try to get too, I don't know, caught up in this, this fullness of the Gentiles, which I guess is going to be mentioned again in Revelation, we, we could get off track, just like the Jewish people got off track by believing the Messiah was this or that. So I think the most open we can keep our minds into what any of this might mean, the better off we'll be. Just keep watching, just like Jesus said, just keep watching, be the brides waiting for the groom and just be open for the door to open and not imagine what you think that door is going to be. That's, that's my best advice. The people of Israel will be brought back to him. Jesus, who is going to be their counselor, is going to bring them back in. And then at the very end, to him be the glory forever. Amen. So Paul ends that discussion inside of a prayer. So it does get rather confusing just because sometimes when we talk about Israel or we talk about the Jewish people, we're either talking about a faith, we're talking about a nation, we're talking about a descendant from Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. And in this particular case, he's talking about everyone who are the descendant people. We're not talking about the nation at this particular point. There is no replacement. We are all grafted in together to be part of one big tree. What I'm going to meditate on this week is the fact that we are all, all humans, grafted onto this tree. And we can't scorn other parts of our tree. We can't say, I don't like this trunk and I don't like this branch and I don't like that other branch and look at that weird apple growing on that third branch over there on the left. We're all part of the same tree and we grow and produce fruits together or we die together. There's no this or that. And so I'm going to meditate on that. And what I'm going to pray about is so that I never have 
I guess, any kind of arrogance that either because I'm Jewish or either because I'm half Gentile or either because I never had to go through all of this or I'm a Jew who became a Christian. As soon as you start thinking anything like that, you have fallen into pride. And instead, he says, there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. We are all the same in the Lord. And I want to pray that I always remember that and that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And what I'm going to share with others is the fact that we are one big grafted tree, regardless of the history, regardless of all the places we have been. There's no distinction between any of us. We are all part of that same tree. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please subscribe and tell a friend about this podcast. I would love to get more people listening to this podcast and being part of a discussion I hope to have sometime. When you go through the Bible, three chapters a week, it's going to be a while. So we're going to be in this for a while. And I hope that we can get a good conversation going among all of us when it comes to the Bible. Thanks so much for listening.